Hey, what's up everybody? I'm back with another video and a follow-up to my last video about the Nintendo NX GPU versus the PlayStation 4K GPU. Um, I decided to go into some more details about the possible features of a Polaris GPU in the Nintendo NX and what it could mean for the NX and why it makes a lot more sense for the NX to use this technology than the PlayStation 4K. Um, the PlayStation 4K that I discussed in the last video, you can uh, watch that to, to hear more about that. But this will be more about the NX and why I feel it makes a lot more sense for the NX to use a Polaris type of architecture than it does for the PS4K. Now, long story short, if you go back to October 2015, the Wall Street Journal announced that Nintendo was sending out development kits to um, third-party developers and that the Nintendo NX devices would use industry-leading chips um, as a response to complaints of the Wii U not being competitive with uh, the market during that time. So industry-leading chips, right? So if you remember also, I did a follow-up video to that one, I think the next day or two days later in October 2015, when I uh, talked to the author of that post, the Wall Street Journal, and I asked him about what they had heard of how the graphical performance would be like and how he knew it would be industry leading chips. And his response was that a technical demo was displayed that would be impossible to run without having a top of the line PC at that time when they showed that demo. And he didn't specify what top of the line PC meant, but obviously that would mean a high spec graphics card and a high spec CPU to run that demo they were showing. So even though that was vague, the, the question remained, how could Nintendo put some kind of a graphics card into the Nintendo NX and have it be industry leading and not you know, sell this thing at a loss or sell it at, at an extremely high cost, basically. You know, because if you put like a GTX 980 or in a console, the, the console is going to cost like $800, right? Because you Or $600, $700 uh, without taking some kind of a loss because those graphics cards cost $400 and then you got the, uh, if you really want to go high, you got the, uh, the GTX 980 Ti that costs $650. Uh, that's just insane. So, which brings me back to when I discussed last year also the Arctic Islands uh, technology that AMD had a breakthrough with. Um, a lot less was known at that time. Now more is known uh, as of this month or in the last few days, AMD has released some more information about the um, Arctic Islands GPU, which is now called the Polaris. Now, it's very, very interesting. It's kind of complicated, but it's very interesting. You see, you see here, I have it on the screen here. You got the Polaris R9 470, 470X, 490, 490X, and so on. Up and up and up. Now, when you look at the specs here shown of the Polaris 11, this is the bottom of the barrel Polaris here. This is the least powerful, least efficient version of the Polaris architecture. It runs at below 50 watts. Okay, it has a maximum of 4 gigabytes of DDR5 and 128-bit memory bus. Only 1,024 stream processors and only 16 compute, un uh, compute units. Okay, so in comparison now, you'll understand why I'm comparing this in a moment. In comparison to the PlayStation 4's current GPU, I'll have it, I have it right here, the AMD 7870. The PlayStation 4 GPU has 1,280 stream processors, 256-bit memory bus, and this is the PC version, of course. The PlayStation 4 has 8 gigabytes of total system memory, but the graphics card it was released on had 2 gigabytes. Uh, 190 watts. The price point was expensive at the time, 350 bucks. On paper, this graphics card looks more powerful, spec-wise, than the Polaris, right? Uh, the the bottom of the barrel Polaris here. Only 
16 complete units and it says right here that the 7870 has 20 CUs. Of course the PlayStation 4 has been reported on to have two of those disabled maybe to, for, for better uh, power savings or whatever to heat. It only has 18 CUs enabled for the um, for the system with the 256 memory uh, bus. So, what does that mean, though? Uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot when you think about it, um, because this was released in 2012 regarding the PlayStation 4 GPU. The Polaris is a brand new, or based on the brand new um, architecture, even though it's still called GCN 4.0. A lot of the features in the Polaris are new, and the baseline architecture is new. Um, some of the core is still the same as GCN, so they still call it GCN. It's not a completely different uh, fabrication, 100%. Now, to understand something about this is that there was a software demo um, that used this R9470 Polaris, which I'll show here in the video running Star Wars Battlefront at 1080p 60 frames per second with this 470 Polaris at the bottom of the barrel here. It was running at medium settings 1080p 60 frames per second. Now this same Polaris uh, GPU here was also shown running at ultra settings the same game at about 45 uh, frames per second at 1080p. And the total system power of that PC that was demoing this game was about 87 watts of power total. So under 100 watts, they're running that uh, demo of Star Wars Battlefront at 1080p 60 frames per second at medium settings and 1080p 45 frames per second at ultra settings. And the PlayStation 4 um, runs Star Wars Battlefront obviously with modified settings who knows what kind of settings it's comparable to the PC maybe medium to high I would imagine or high it runs that game at 60 frames per second at 900p so not even a full 1080p so in actuality the Polaris 11 the slowest version actually runs at a better performance rate than the PlayStation 4 GPU does why? Well, it's because this is an amazing breakthrough for AMD. You guys may not understand how big this is for that company, that they have developed this 14 nanometer uh, FinFET design that has um, greatly increased performance for the amount of power it produces. So these cores, these stream processors, everything about it can produce more performance than an older architecture could with less. So some of the features that the Polaris has, I have another, I'll put these links in the description. It has a primitive disk card accelerator, hardware scheduler, instruction prefetch, improved shader efficiency, and memory com uh, compression. Some of these are new and some of these are you know obviously improved. Like, of course I'm not a developer, I don't know you know this stuff I had to do research on it but if you research this and learn more about it this primitive discard accelerator basically allows the GPU to um, render uh, large worlds without having to render everything at the same time so it'll only render what's what you can see on the screen and the rest of it won't render until you can until it's you know in the line of visibility I guess you know that's kind of a layman's way to describe it how the PlayStation 4 GPU works is that it needs to have um, the whole scene rendered when you um, see like an open open world game like Grand Theft Auto 5 because it doesn't have this primitive discard accelerator in the GPU it needs to render the entire world whether you can see it or not that causes extreme difficulty on performance so with these features the performance is greatly improved even with less power. It can really improve um, games with their graphics detail, with their uh, how much detail they can display in an open world. Now don't get me wrong here, this primitive discard accelerator and these other features, they are possible to a lesser degree on PlayStation 4, but 
they do need to have their own software to, to run them, basically, to, to have that increased performance. And it's not as effective as having it built into the GPU itself, as this is talking about here in this article, which I'll link. Basically, this technology is extremely efficient, it's really fast, and it doesn't consume a lot of power. So also, what's amazing is, is that the Polaris, go back here, the Polaris uh, 10, which is shown here with the 36 uh, complete units and the 2300 stream processors, 256-bit architecture, its cost is going to be about 299 and they compared this already like we talked about in the last video that this Polaris 10 is going to be similar to to a 980 Ti graphics card which costs about $650 so the performance versus cost is an amazing difference so it makes you wonder how much this R9 470 will cost right if this 980 Ti type of performance is $300 on retail. How much would something like this cost for uh, for a con? Well, not for a console, but for a uh, retail, It'd probably be like 150 bucks. You know, they could probably sell that for a really good price. So that brings us around to industry-leading chips. A console running technology based on something like this could run games hypothetically at 1080p 60 frames per second with high details if it was based on something like this. So logically I'm concluding that that demo that Nintendo showed to developers last year was most likely logically based on something like this, something like this technology or some features from it to make it uh, be able to run like that. Now. For Nintendo to have that in a console, they would have to have low power and low cost, right? That also seems to logically fit right in with this technology, since AMD is going to be selling at an extremely low price, uh, way less than the NVIDIA uh, similar uh, performance of their cards. So my theory is, is that the Nintendo NX would not necessarily have something based on 128-bit memory bus and it would not have a 4 gigabyte the RAM obviously whatever Nintendo builds is going to be a custom GPU and we all know that but it's going to be low in power so it has, it has to be something along these lines my thought would be that they would take this Polaris 11 GPU possibly the one with 20 compute units and maybe add something from the other GPU, possibly the 8 gigabytes of RAM and the 256-bit memory bus. But still keep the, the uh, CUs low like this and the stream processors lower like that to, to cut down the cost even more so. So in that sense, you have this R9470X with like a half and half. Like you have half the performance here of the uh, Polaris 11 and then you have the other half of the Polaris 10 down here combine that together and maybe just maybe hypothetically you might have the Nintendo NX uh, GPU of what it could do and when you look at those hard numbers right there the specs they don't look hardly any different from the PlayStation 4 specs do they however the performance would be quite a bit better because we're talking about performance from the baseline Polaris 11 being greater than the PlayStation 4 here with only a thousand um, stream processors and even less compute units. Now these rumors that have been going around that the NX specs are have been you know reported as being slightly better than PlayStation 4 the actual numbers of the specs right and uh, there's also another rumor saying the CPU was more powerful, but again, we don't have any information on the CPU at all. Um, that's even less known <laughs> by anybody. But the uh, GPU, there's been things that have been gone around uh, the internet about the GPU, you know, being from AMD and the technology they're debuting um, this year, and all these wins in their, their design technology. So everything points to AMD. 
So it makes perfect sense for Nintendo to use something from this Polaris architecture, right? Hard numbers don't equal performance. Hard numbers of PlayStation 4 don't equal brand new performance of a new GPU. Again, I'm going to show that demo of, of Battlefront running on this little Polaris 11 470, and you'll see the difference. Now, it was also uh, reported by Emily Rogers that the specs are good, but don't expect PlayStation 4K, right? So that also makes perfect sense that the numbers would be like this. The PlayStation 4K has 36 CUs, right? But like I said in my previous video, it's highly unlikely they would be using a Polaris due to the limitations of the, of the console that Sony is putting on there. So it makes more sense that, like I said, PlayStation 4K would be using basically a 7870 running an SLI, doubling the CUs to 36. Um, that's just my speculation on that. So for the Nintendo NX though, it may look to have that smaller amount of spec numbers, but the actual performance could hypothetically be uh, much greater than the PlayStation 4. Now we have to see for sure to know that, but everything that we've seen up to this point shows that is extremely powerful and efficient for what it can do with such uh, lower numbers than ever before, and low power output as well. So logically guys, this would be the only way Nintendo could have an industry leading chipset at a low cost and be able to sell it in their console, possibly still for a profit. There is no other manufacturer developing technology like this um, for a cost like this. Nvidia is not doing it, they're doing the Pascal, but it's not like this, and it's not this at this low cost. Um, Intel's not doing nothing with integrated chips. Uh, PowerVR is not doing nothing that can compete on this type of level. Um, it's just not going to happen. AMD is the only company that's doing something like this that is low in power but high in performance. And AMD basically knocked it out of the park here. I think that Nintendo definitely was interested in this uh, technology. Again, I'm not saying that I know anything for sure. It's, this is speculation, but it makes perfect sense. And logically, um, that's how you could get lower spec numbers, higher performance, and better than PlayStation 4. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you understood my explanations. I'll try to uh, explain more if I can. Again, I don't have all the facts, but I am just making logical conclusions based on what we know and what has been reported on already. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment, hit that like button, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys very soon on the next video. Take care.